This is a video news release with DPP, the planning consultancy. Uh, the contents of this video news release are provided copyright free to use on social media or on other media platforms, providing they're set in an appropriate context. Gareth Hooper is the CEO of DPP. Gareth, what is the outlook for the planning sector in the light of the coronavirus outbreak and how are you supporting your clients who might have a bit of log jam? Um, Graham, yes, we've seen um, really kind of positive steps by a lot of authorities around the UK. We've seen early positive steps by central government in terms of trying to encourage um, the planning process to continue. Um, I think that's been um, you know, very much welcomed by clients, um, but it's very much a mixed bag in terms of how that is being applied around the country. Some authorities very much proactively um, trying to change the way in which they work in terms of processing or planning applications. Um, equally, others changing the way in which they determine planning applications to continue the momentum. Um, sadly, not authorities um, have the infrastructure to enable them to to just pick up where they left off when they were in the office. Mm. Um, so that's proving challenging at the minute. Um, but it's from varying across the sectors, um, certainly the housing market and the volume house builders um, feel because of the lack of sales that are uh, taking place during this period, that's had a negative impact on them as businesses. And as a result, they have pretty much suspended work on progressing anything other than current schemes. Um, but equally, we've seen um, a commitment by the government on school spending so a lot of our schools projects and our health projects are continuing unabated and equally we have some commercial clients that actually see this period um, as an opportunity to proceed with schemes um, perhaps um, more engagement with councils who are being pushed by authorities to be pro more proactive to ensure that when we come out with this current crisis um, there is activity and development can take place on site Let's give a shout out to some of the local authorities that you think have been positive. Um, yeah, I think um, we saw, you know, the um, uh, ministerial statement that came out last week, encouraging authorities um, to move forward in terms of determining planning applications. We saw a very positive, immediate response from Manchester City Council that have come out and committed to uh, committees taking place, just using three members and those being done remotely. Um, so that was a very positive step. Um, we, we've seen others around the UK looking to get themselves set up. You know, we've got a, in fact, I've got a planning committee taking place next week in Luton. Again, that's being undertaken by Sky. So again, you know, real positive stances. I think that the real problem has been one of uh, infrastructure and, and witnessing authorities, um, you know, planning officers and consultees who, who are wedded to desks because they have desktop computers. Technology has enabled companies like ourselves and a lot of the consultants and clients we work with to simply pick up and relocate to home. Um, in some instances, local authorities are not set up, so they unfortunately um, are having problems in actually continuing to process things. That follows through to planning committees likewise. Some committees very technology um, enabled, which very easily they can uh, enable remote uh, committee meetings, um, others less so. You know, where they have been um, less able to um, get together as planning committees, we've seen some really positive responses from authorities such as um, um, Pembrokeshire Council, who've actually come out um, earlier this week and said that all applications will be dealt with under delegated powers, in effect suspending planning committees during this period. Again, a hugely positive step to ensure that, you know, um, developments continue. Uh, despite the delegated powers issue, the people that make the decision, consultation continues to be important. And I know that DPP has been very active to implement some 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 innovations such as e-consultation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think um, you know we we have the benefit in Wales. Um, you know, our Cardiff office have for two years had to undertake um, pre-application consultation. Um, which is a mandatory requirement on planning applications prior to the submission of planning applications. As part of that, that requires us to um, um, conduct an electronic consultation, hosting um, application documents on our website, um, emailing out uh, consultation requests and capturing those electronically. Um, 
the benefit that we've had is that we've been able to roll that out to lots of our projects around um, the rest of the UK. Um, indeed, you know, we've got two big consultations which are taking place this week as a result of us being able to shift from a physical um, consultation to an online consultation. Um, there's lots of debate about um, whether that is lessening um, the ability for um, third parties and for residents to engage as part of consultations. Certainly our experience is that I think most people are now technology enabled and I think even more so during this current period, I think people do have access to emails and to websites and they are able to feed into processes. So again, we've seen that as a real positive and I'd like to think that you know, a positive coming out from this current crisis is that you know, this form of electronic consultation with the ability to actually reach more parties um, will be something that you know, uh, authorities in England will adopt in the same way that they have done in Wales. What do you want to happen to consents that might have to lapse? So you've got planning consent to undertake some development, but this coronavirus has happened, uh, issue has happened, and the consent lapses in the period that you were maybe about to start work and, and make the consent uh, alive. Yeah, yeah. Th you know, this is a really major issue. You know, we we have been working, um, you know, two tight times on a number of projects before the crisis hit to enable discharge of conditions on consents that are due to lapse um, in the next um, few months. So there are two issues there. The issue um, in relation to physically getting conditions discharged. So in theory, you cannot implement your planning consent until you have all your conditions discharged. Then physically enabling a start on site. Um, the ability to get a contractor to site to physically undertake works on site proves challenging as well. I think you know we are um, seeing really positive engagement from a lot of authorities in um, being pragmatic about pushing through um, decisions on conditions to enable um, implementation to take place, which again is really positive. Some uh, authorities who do want these developments to take place and are reacting in a very positive fashion. Again, a big shout out to Wolverhampton Council, who've had you know, really positive engagement from an officer who has gone above and beyond, um, in my uh, view, in terms of getting that to be achieved. The obvious point is that that's not going to be possible across all of the, the consents that are going to be lapsing during this period. Um, what we would ask is that um, in these exceptional circumstances, that there was a grace period granted, two consents are going to lapse during this period. Um, that would just give um, uh, developers um, confidence that they don't have to rush things you know the flip side to that is if that measure doesn't come into place clients will be taking risks I'm having daily conversations with clients about if they commence on site to safeguard their consent but they haven't discharged all their conditions are they going to face enforcement action at a later period again we'd like to think that there is going to be a pragmatic response when this crisis is over to any works that have been undertaken during this period potentially in breach of conditions now clearly there has to be an a sensible interpretation of where the conditions that require discharging are fundamental to the consent or they are um, secondary. Now there are provisions within planning law to enable that to happen already but what would be excellent would be some you know a formal statement from central government that there will be a grace period extending consents for say six months um, to enable developers to be able to bag those consents and not have to risk people going to site and undertaking measures um, that otherwise wouldn't be taking place.